Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to show you some examples of finding limits involving absolute value. Limit of absolute of x minus 3 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the right. Many students have difficulty when they want to find limits involving absolute. And the problem is that they don't know how to get rid of the absolute value. Note that, for example here, if this absolute was not here, then simply you can say x minus 3 from the top with x minus 3 from the bottom cancel each other. These two cancel each other and the limit is 1. So, it seems easy. But we have the absolute. How we can get rid of the absolute in limits in general? Let me tell you the way that we can get rid of the absolute in limits in general. Let's say we have absolute value of f of x, and f of x can be anything. f of x can be x minus 3, x min it can be x2, x plus 1, x, sine x, or any other function. So, we have absolute of some function. To get rid of the absolute value in a question, you need to know the sign of the expression inside of the absolute. If the expression inside the absolute is positive attention if the expression so there is an if if we know that f of x is greater than equal zero if we know that the expression inside the absolute is positive or zero absolute of f of x is simply f of x is the original expression we don't need to put any absolute for f of x because f of x is already positive so simply you can get rid of the absolute but if f of x is positive but what if f of x is negative if f of x is less than zero note that in this case f of x is something negative but what is the role of absolute to make something that is negative positive how we can make something that is negative attention f of x we suppose f of x negative something that is negative by multiplying by a negative we can make it positive so absolute of f of x in this case would be negative of f of x negative of the original expression so in either case we can get rid of the absolute if f of x is positive absolute of f of x would be f of x would be original expression. If f of x is negative, the absolute of f of x is negative of f of x. Keep this in your head for all the questions, not only in limits, for all the questions that you have in math, you can use this rule to get rid of the absolute. Now that we learn this technique, let's back to our question we had limit of x approaches 3 from the right of absolute of we had an absolute here absolute of x minus 3 over x minus 3 to start to find this limit first we have to figure out the expression inside the absolute x minus 3 is it positive or negative in general x minus 3 of course x minus 3 can be positive or negative because x can be anything and depending to the value of x this expression can be positive or negative but attention this is a limit question and x approaches a number x approaches in this case 3 from the right so x is a number close to 3 and because x approaches 3 from the right x approaches 3 from the positive side x is greater than 3. In your head, for simplicity, you can suppose x is something like 3.1, 3.01, because x approaches 3 again from the right side. If x is a number close to 3, greater than 3, when you subtract 3 from that number, this expression would be positive or negative? It is positive. Let me review why again it is positive. Attention, x approaches 3 from the right. So x is greater than 3. If from something that is greater than 3, we subtract a 3, the remainder is positive. Let's say 3.1 minus 3 is 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 is positive. 
So we know that the expression inside or absolute is something positive. Now look at this. If f of x, if f of x is positive, absolute of f of x equals f of x. We don't need to put any absolute for that expression. So to solve this limit, simply we say limit of x minus 3 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the positive side, from the right. x minus 3 from the numerator with x minus 3 from denominator cancel each other and the limit equals 1. Now let me show you another example. Limit of absolute of x over x as x approaches 0 from negative side, from the left. This is again a one-sided limit. Because this is a one-sided limit, we know that x approaches 0, but from the left. So x is a number less than 0. x is close to 0, but less than 0 because x approaches 0 from the left. When x approaches 0 from the left, x is a negative number. Remember the number line, 0 is here. If we approach 0 from the left, we are in the negative numbers. We are, we are in the region that the numbers are negative. So the x that is inside the absolute is something negative. Now we have this case from this rule. The expression inside the absolute is negative. And we know that to find limits involving the absolute, First, we have to try to get rid of the absolute. What is absolute of x in this case? Is it equal to original expression or is it equal to negative of the original expression? This is the second case. So absolute of x equals not to x, equals negative of x, negative of the original expression over x. We do not change the denominator. Just we try to get rid of this absolute. Now we have limit of negative x over x as x approaches 0 from the left. Negative x over x. x with x cancel each other. x is common between the top and the bottom. So the limit equals negative 1. What about this limit? What is limit? x approaches 0, but this time from positive side of absolute of x over x. If you want, now you can pause the video and try this question by yourself. Because x approaches 0 from the positive side, x is a number close to 0, but a bit greater than 0. So, which case from this rule we have here? Because the expression inside the absolute is x, and x approaches 0 from the positive side, x is a positive number, x is a positive expression. So we have this case actually. And when the expression inside the absolute is positive, absolute of f of x equals f of x. So absolute of x equals x. So we have limit of x over x as x approaches 0 from the right. x with x cancel each other from the top and the bottom and limit is 1. Now that we find these two limits, let's say we are asked to find this limit. Limit x approaches 0 of absolute of x over x. This limit is a two-sided limit because x approaches 0 and we don't know x approaches 0 from which side. Because this is a two-sided limit, x can approach 0 from the right and x can approach 0 from the left. If x approaches 0 from the right, as we can see here, the limit would be 1. If x approaches 0 from the left, the limit is negative 1. So, the right limit and left limit, as you can see here, are different. And because left limit and right limit, when x approaches 0, are different, the left limit and right limit are not equal to each other. So the, this limit does not exist. 
So limit of absolute of x over x when x approaches 0 from both sides, a two side as a two sided limit, this limit does not exist. Let me show you another example of these type of limits. Here we want to find limit of absolute of 1 minus x over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. Similar to the previous questions, we have to try to get rid of the absolute. How we can get rid of the absolute? By looking at the inside of the absolute. We have to try to figure out this expression is positive or negative when x approaches 1 from the right. When x approaches 1 from the right, remember the number line, let's say 0 is here, 1 is here, 2 here. So here, we approach 1 from the right. We are somewhere here. We are close to 1, but greater than 1. Numbers like 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.01. Based on this value of x, 1 minus x is positive or negative? For example, you can think 1 minus 1.1. 1 .1. Is this positive or negative? 1 minus x is negative when x approaches 1 from the right, because 1 minus 1.1, 1 .1, for example, is negative 0.1. So this ex expression inside the absolute is negative. Now based on this and the rule that we had here, if the expression inside the absolute is negative, absolute of that expression equals negative of that expression. If the expression is positive, absolute is the original expression. If the expression is less than zero, absolute of that expression is negative of that expression. Why? Because we want to make it positive. The role of absolute is to make it positive. So based on this rule, based on the definition of absolute, what happens here? Because the expression inside the absolute is negative, to get rid of the absolute, simply multiply the expression inside the absolute by a negative. And we write the denominator and the limit. Now look at the numerator. We have negative of 1 minus x. If you multiply the negative in the numerator, if you apply that negative in the bracket, then we would have limit x approaches 1 from the right of x minus 1 over x minus 1. How from this we got this? Let me explain it here. We have negative of 1 minus x. If we apply negative, we have negative 1 plus x. But actually negative 1 plus x is x minus 1. It's better to write it this way. And now it's more clear that it is the same as the denominator. Again, why negative 1 plus x is x minus 1? Negative 1, negative 1, and x is x. Just I change the order. Now, if you look at the numerator and then in the denominator, you can see that x minus 1 from the top with x minus 1 from the bottom cancel each other. So what is this limit? The limit equals 1. So limit of absolute of 1 minus x over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right equals 1. Let me show you one more example of this type of limits. Here we want to find limit of absolute of x to the 2 minus 100 over x minus 10 as x approaches 10. Attention here, we have a two-sided limit. This is not a one-sided limit. x approaches 10 from both sides. When x approaches 10 from both sides, x can be greater than 10, x can be less than 10. Only we know that x is close to 10. 10 is here. We approach 10 from the left, we approach can approach 10 from the right. So, we cannot find this limit right away just in this form, in this given form. We have to separate this limit to two separate limits. Why we have to do so? Because we want to get rid of the absolute. Attention. We want to get rid of the absolute 
for this expression. To get it out absolute, we have to be able to find x to the 2 minus 100 is positive expression or negative expression. And that depends to the value of x. If x is greater than 10, if x is a number like 10.1, 10 10.2, 10 11, something like that, close to 10 by greater than 10, simply you can see that x to the 2 minus 100 is positive. But if x is less than 10, like 9.9, .9, x to the 2 minus 100 would be negative and because in this limit we don't know from which side x approaches 10 actually it approaches 10 from both sides we cannot get rid of the absolute in this limit in this given form so first we are going to write this limit as two one-sided limit x approaches 10 from the right of that expression and x approaches 10 from the left of that expression. Now that we know from which side x approaches 10, we can get rid of the absolute. If x approaches 10 from the right, x is a number greater than 10, something like 10.1. 10.1 to the 2 is a number greater than 100 minus 100 would be positive so when x approaches 10 from the right x to the 2 minus 100 is a positive expression and when something is positive absolute of that expression equals the original expression absolute of f of x equals f of x so in the first case in the first limit we have limit of x to the 2 minus 100 over x minus 10 as x approaches 10 from the right but in the second limit because x approaches 10 from the left, x is a number close to 10 but less than 10, something like 9.9. .9. x to the 2 minus 100 would be negative expression. So we would have negative of x to the 2 minus 100 over x minus 10. So in the first limit, absolute is equal to the original expression. But in the second case, absolute of the expression equals negative of the original expression. Now we have to find these two limits from the difference of a square's identity you know that x to the 2 minus 100 simply can be written as x minus 10 times x plus 10 and if you cancel x minus 10 from the top with x minus 10 from the bottom we would have limit of x plus 10 as x approaches 10 from the right what is this limit? Because x approaches 10, if we plug in, if we substitute simply 10 for x, 10 plus 10 is 20. So the right limit is 20. Here also, if we use that identity, this difference of a square's identity, if we write this simply as x minus 10 times x plus 10, x minus 10 with x minus 10 cancels what remains is a negative of x plus 10 and the limit would be negative 20 so as you can see the right limit is 20 the left limit is negative 20 so finally what is this limit because the left limit and right limit when x approaches 10 are different so the original limit this limit does not exist I hope by watching this video you have learned how to find limits involving absolute value.